Come over my dad. Uh, today I picked the topic why invest in Japan? Because I think in the past 10, maybe 15 years, everyone is talking about China, China, China. But, but Japan is still a very interesting place for everyone to invest in or think about to invest in. So I, I spent a little time and did some research. Hopefully I, this is going to be uh, interesting and maybe inspiring to you guys. So uh, first of all, let me make some introduction of myself and my firm. I work for an accounting firm. In uh, We are actually very big in China. We have the biggest Japanese accounting firm in China. We have offices in Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka, etc., etc. We also, I am based in Hong Kong. I am actually from Hong Kong. Uh, my name is Leroy, Leroy Yu, Leroy, Leroy Thomas Russ. Uh, uh, I am the head of M&A division of this company. I actually do not do the accounting stuff. I do more, you know, uh, M&A. We introduce business. We help Japanese companies to invest in Hong Kong and China. We also help Hong Kong companies uh, and European companies to invest in, in Japan. Okay, uh, sometimes you read in the news Everyone is saying Japan is in recession. This is this is from the Financial Times. It says Japan's forced back into recession. So basically, in for, for the economists, they say when you have three three quarters of negative GDP growth, then you technically you're in a recession. What does that mean? So it means oh, it's very negative. It's very very bad. So I think a lot of us from Hong Kong, I think Hong Kong people, we like to go to Japan a lot, right? We go to Japan for holidays, and sometimes it's a trip. So maybe when you go there, do you feel the economy is very, very bad? I'm also very hungry. Right? I, I have the slide here, just so I, I speak very quickly, so that we can go to dinner quickly. This is a restaurant that I really like in Tokyo. I am going to go there next week. Uh, I have some customers from Europe. They, they are a very large chemicals company they want to buy some companies in Japan. So that right now they are selling to Japan their, their chemical products through some distributors. But now they want to acquire these companies so that they become their own company. So next Monday, I will see a French guy and an Italian guy in Tokyo. Of course, they all like to eat like us. So of course, I bring them the good food. So I have been to this restaurant one time in Tokyo. It's not like a, a, a very fancy place, but it's like a very small restaurant like in the middle of nowhere, in a very convenient place, but it's really in the back street like this. And then it's a very, very small restaurant. The reason I bring this up is this restaurant, I try to go there next Monday night, but it's already completely full. Okay, what I'm trying to say is, in Japan, maybe the economists tell you that there is a recession, but the fact is a lot of people in Japan, they still have a lot of money. They still want to buy or eat, good food and they still want to have good services. As long as your service is good, as long as you position yourself correctly, like for in this case, this restaurant, the owner actually was a chef from a five-star hotel in Japan. He used to be in charge of the teppanyaki. Now he came out and then he, he, he started his own restaurant and it has become very, very successful. So my secretary in Tokyo, she said, she said oh, we, this is already full. So we look for other similar restaurants. We find that many, many good ones that you can see on the internet, they're all full. Okay, but luckily I still, I still find one that is available. What I'm trying to say is, even though Japan is in a recession, maybe the total GDP is declining slowly. But if you look at Japan, Japan is a very, very large country. It used to be the second largest in terms of GDP. Now it is number three because China has become much bigger, right? If you look at this graph, you see that if we define Japan in roughly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven areas, and if you measure the GDP in each area, for example, the north area, it's almost the same as Turkey. Okay, Turkey. Anyone been to Turkey? You have no idea. Right? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's, let's say the Kanto region which means the East region, which is like including Tokyo and the surrounding areas. The GDP of this area is actually almost the same as that of the whole of the UK. So imagine UK is a very big and rich country, right? Imagine, imagine selling your product or service in just this region, okay? It is a huge market. What I'm trying to say is if you have good product, good service, if you position yourself correctly, it is, Japan is a huge country and there will be a lot of opportunity if you want to invest in Japan. 
Okay, uh, graphs like this, but basically it's just telling you that Japan is blue, it's like, oh, it's not doing well, okay? What, which countries are doing well? Canada is doing well. Uh, China is not here, right? If you look at China graph, maybe China is doing like this. But we have all been to China, we have all tried to do business in China. I think many of us have been very successful, but some we think it's also very difficult. I think there's, in, in everywhere you go, if you want to do business well, it's going to be difficult anywhere you go anyway. We look, at, we look at the reason why the Japan uh, economy, the GDP, is not growing as fast as other countries. Uh, a very, very large reason is because the working population, the number of people who are working age, is actually declining. This is the blue graph. Comparing to 20 years ago, it is actually declining. Right now in Japan, every four person, there is one person who is actually over the age of 65. Okay. The, in, in the future, we see that the working population is going to decline quite fast. Even though the economy is like slowly declining, which actually means that the per working person productivity is actually increasing. Okay? That actually means that the amount number of people who can actually spend good money in good products is actually still a very, very large number of people. What I'm saying is, it doesn't matter if Japan is in recession, because you're not selling everything to everyone in Japan. So as long as you pick your target segment, as long as you have a good product or service, you can still have a very good successful business in Japan. So I have, I have picked this one as an example. Okay, look at this. this, what is this? Popcorn. Okay, in Hong Kong we eat popcorn only when we go to the cinema, right? Otherwise we don't eat it. But this shop, is look at the website, it's actually quite successful. I found out about this, this, this brand because I was in Singapore two weeks ago and a friend of mine was telling me he is also thinking about selling his product into Japan. What he does, he actually sells sugar-related products. And then he told me there is this brand in Japan that is very, very successful. Okay, look at this. So popcorn, they make popcorn very, very special. Strawberry, coconut, melon, and there are actually a lot more in the, in the bottom. So my friend's business is selling the sugar coating, special kind of sugar to this company. So he knows this is a growing business. They have actually 14 shops already since 2013. That's two years ago. Okay. I, think, I think this is a very, very successful company. Imagine if someone can sell popcorn in Japan, in two years' time, there are 14 shops. So if we Hong Kong people, we have something that is something very special and original and innovative, there is a lot of chance to sell this. The more important thing about this case is the first shop here, Nakameguro. Actually, the owners, they are one guy from Chicago, the other guy from, uh, from Seattle, American guys. They were cooks, they were chefs before, they are not popcorn experts before. They started, to, they want to start their own business. They did the research for about two years. They have decided that they want to do popcorn, special kind of popcorn, and they chose Japan to start. This shop in Nakameguro is actually the first of this shop in the whole world. So there must be a reason why they want to choose Japan instead of maybe Shanghai or Hong Kong or something. Okay. Uh, actually, I have uh, I have been working in Japan for almost 20 years, and uh, I have I was the CFO in a consumer company in Japan. I was uh, do, I have been doing M and A's and other deals in Japan for many years. I my, I have actually lived in Japan for a few years. I, I speak quite good Japanese. I watch Japanese TV. I can sing Japanese karaoke, and I used to have a wife who's just Japanese as well. So I know quite a bit about the, the general people in Japan. What I find very, very striking and interesting is Japan, a lot of people, right? But they all speak Japanese, okay? Whereas, of course, in China, we also have Putonghua, right? But in China, when you go to different provinces, they, of course, they talk different dialects. And in Japan, the, we also have Kansai band and, you know, uh, no, Fuku, uh, Ka, Kyushu band, Miyazaki band. We have different kinds of dialects. But in the end, the education system is so very good that everyone really, they actually watch the same TV channels. 
they watch the main TV channels that is nationwide. So in terms of TV coverage, not just like in China, we have CCTV. They also have their very popular Japanese uh, TV programs. So if you do advertising, it's going to be very, very effective. And also, nowadays, of course, it's not really TV commercials anymore, right? It's also internet, word of mouth. So you can imagine the office ladies in Japan, they're becoming more and more wealthy because salary is increasing and all that. They will be looking at in the same internet websites if something catches up like this popcorn. I'm sure they talk about it a lot and then suddenly you have long queues outside of every shop. What I'm trying to say is if you have a good product, if you have a good service, it is a lot easier to do your marketing because the base is really, really big. Language is the same, culture is the same. You go to America, you have, everybody speaks English. Really? No. A lot of people speak Spanish, right? You have to tackle Spanish as well. The second point is stable legal environment. We, we, we all have done business in China. We know how it is. If you are in, successful in Beijing, doesn't mean that you can be successful in Shanghai. You have to go to each local government. You have to build your relationship in every city that you go to. Whereas in Japan, I know that the process is more or less, you know, it's very transparent. You just have to do all the application, fill out all the form, relatively easier. <coughs> Logistics very good. If you move your products around, very, very reliable. If you're doing fresh goods, frozen products, but, uh, delivery companies, they can guarantee you very, very good service. Making it very, a lot easier to, to, to grow your business. Once you have a model, you can copy it into many different cities in Japan. Please, next slide. I think time is almost up. So I talked about consumer industry. Uh, perhaps some of you uh, are doing industrial. What I'm trying to say is Japan is also like Hong Kong. It's going through transitions every once 20 years. Hong Kong was like this as well. In the beginning, after the war, Japan had to build a lot of stuff. Started with manufacturing. They have built a base, they have built a management system, they have built a mentality to improve things, so they make good stuff. After that, we have the Sony Walkman, we have the Honda cars, motorcycles, consumer goods become really, really well. Now, it's all Korean, right? It's all Samsung, LG, and, and the Chinese brands as well. So now, consumer goods is becoming very, very competitive. It seems that they have to go somewhere else. So in Japan, now we talk about high-tech businesses, high-tech innovation like robotics, healthcare, medical instruments, advanced materials, and specialized printing like Nisha. This is a high-tech area where you don't see, you don't see on the billboards around Times Square here, you see Samsung only. But the high-tech high, high tech like printing of Nisha, you don't see them, but you only see them inside the products. And I think this is the second, second level of transformation that Japan is doing. It will produce a lot of high-value added goods for the consumer world and for the other uh, heavy industry world. So if you are in the, in the industrial sector, what I'm saying is there are a lot of opportunity if you have time to look into what Japanese industrial companies are doing Maybe you can cooperate with them, maybe you can do some very good business together. I don't know if you have seen this, this is actually a robot. So this is, I think, the highest representation of high-tech technology that mankind, we can do. I see, I've seen the read video, the, the dialogue, this is for medical use for hospital. This nurse, she can actually respond very intelligently. intelligently. Imagine an old person, 60, 70 years old in the home. They kind of feel a little bit better. So uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, if you have time, look more into Japan, go to Japan, talk to friends, talk to us. Perhaps we can give you some good idea in terms of how you can expand your business in Japan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Roy. You're welcome.